Should we try and break 90, Matthew? I do that regularly. <laughs> I don't need to try. People are enjoying that. I did a break 100 series and a break 80 series, all based around millions of shots from the team at Shotscope who are sharing some data with me. They have no say in this video. It's all our content. They're just sharing their data with you, or with me, and I'm sharing it with you to help you play some better golf. We're going to break 90. So first protocol for breaking 90 is you've got to get your driving average to 220. We'll talk about a few things of how to up driving averages as we go. But what we're going to do in today's challenge is we're not allowed to hit more than the seven iron off the tee. Okay. Now, I don't mind if you hit six, because obviously our lofts would be similar. You can choose to hit seven or six. All right, thank you. But basically, I'm not going to hit this over 200 yards. No. So I'm going to not do the 220 average, mm -hmm. and let's see if we can break 90. Should be a fun one. So I can hit my seven iron, basically I'm aiming down the middle. I'm not trying to go any sides. It looks like there's plenty of room down there. Bit toey, so I'm probably gonna have another seven iron again. Now this hole measures in the region of 308 yards. Yep. Length of course is something you have to consider. This is what, five six or something? Like short, isn't yeah, it? I think it's five eight-ish, but okay. yeah. So it's five six, five eight, yeah. thousand yards. When we play courses like, say, at Saunton, North Devon, which is gonna measure 6,000 plus yeah. in winds, like this would be challenging. But remember the slope would be accounting for that. So it all evens itself out, but I wouldn't be getting off inappropriate tees at that course. No. So I would really be playing from the yellows, but again, I want to do it from the whites because the point of the video is to show that you can still break these scores if you don't hit these distances. It's just hitting these distances, as shot scope show from the average, will just make it easier. But you know, some people's distance are in decline. There's golfers who are getting older, yeah, no. so don't get <laughs> frustrated. There's other ways. So with our second shots of the distance off the tee, I'm not allowed to hit more than an eight iron and Matt's not allowed to hit more than a seven because yeah. obviously your second shot generally won't go as far as whatever you tee off with. What yeah. have you got in, Matt? I feel like this is a bit of a morning dew flyer. Yeah, oh. there's an interesting point straight away. He's already oh. trying to work out how to... Oh, he's removing. How to hit greens. Yeah. Um, because we'll talk about the green average hit and it's a real big number that will help you score. Well, how far you got? About... I've got 150 to the flag, so that's back by the looks of it. So I can probably hit it 140 to hit that slope. Yeah. Club? i got a wedge. A little skinny one, but it's nice and straight. Skinny straight one, straight at it. The right bounce is... That Ready. will be good. So you must have a little less... 124 middle gap wedge. I've got my 52, but I might hit a little wedge. Oh. It looks really close. It does look really close, yeah, but white flag is definitely at the back. Is it? So it's 139 back, so I'm going to play like a 125, 130 yardage. I mean, I'm going there, it's quite interesting, isn't it? I'm going from a 110 to a 130 yardage on <laughs> decisions. Left, unfortunately, but that's not bottom. Bounce, it'll be alright. Yeah, yeah. It's a green, Matthew. It is a green, well done. What a shot, Matthew. Well, uh, that's a nice, slightly thinned onto that bank that I talked about. <laughs> well, what's so amazing with that is that's like a net one and stuff. Isn't it? Net e e yeah, net eagle. Like, well, sure, it's like a 1.5, isn't it? What's the score on average on par fours? Five point something? Yeah, probably, yeah. I'm uh, gaining there. <laughs> gaining. <laughs> right, can I gain on you here? Yes, I can. Oh! oh don't do that. No. Do not do that. <laughs> that it that, touched. It, was it the flag? Uh, no, it no. just lipped, yeah, yeah, it just lipped. It was a good effort. You you can pick that up, sir. That seems a little cruel. Yes. Purely cut green, I was, that was in. Wowzers. Break 90. You're going under par, sir. <laughs> so par five, this is now where I really am feeling my lack of distance is frustrating me. And I think this is where you see those scoring averages go up, aren't you? Like you're hitting three shots. Yeah. The percentages of a 90 handicapper hitting 
a 90, great 90 score, sorry. Hitting three good shots in a row can be quite tricky for lots of people, can't it? Yeah. Like, we're put, you're putting yourself under pressure. Whereas if you've got idea of skill and a bit of distance, then that pressure's now easing as you go up the hole. So I just need three good strikes and I'll probably get there with my two six irons and a little something, I'm not sure what. Yeah. 200, 200. Oh, I've towed it. Go! <laughs> Go! Right in the middle of the fairway though, it's not a problem. Oh, that is not very far off. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure applied with a weak strike. Well, I don't really see that. And when I play with Fanula, my eldest, who is a, this kind of shooter and a buck, she's a break 100. And I see it with my mum. She like really gets upset when she hits a drive that isn't perfect. And I literally say to her, like, yeah. you, you're, you've got three shots to get on this par four. You'll knock, she can't reach it in two, say. Yeah. If you hit one, your best, 200, and then you scab one, 180. <laughs> so I'm not feeling much pressure here of hitting fairways. And if you look at the fairway count, it's interesting how it stays quite steady amongst lots of groups of players. Yeah. It's not a big influencer. Now off the tee, I mean, I've tried to hit that a little harder. And these are little tricks you could try and use on holes. Like there's plenty of room up there. So on a par five with a bit of room, the question you should be asking yourself is can you hit one a bit harder? Can you squeeze one up there a bit further to try and make it that bit easier? Have you got the room to do it? And then other things you should be looking at is like, is your driver good for you for your speeds and launches? I see lots of people lose distance or leave distance on the table by not getting the most out of the launch conditions of the club they hit. And then the other big keys, which I've said in the other videos, reduce curvature and work on strike with your driver. Yeah. And then the one last thing, and something I've enjoyed doing, and you can do it just as a life choice, get stronger, get fitter, get faster. You don't have to do all those, remember? We're hitting shots way below the playing average for this kind of shooter. So there's other ways of doing it, but those ideas will only make it easier. All right, so I have got the distance through strike. So back to my point there on the tee. Uh, you can see uh, my ball's up there, so I've won on a better strike there, so you can get distance off the tee if you can keep your consistency of strike up, lessons, yeah. having swing thoughts that help you manage strike. Better strike, don't go in that bunker. Up the left, all decent hit, should be able to get on in free from there. Yeah. So what's really interesting with the distances we're hitting, you can see now me and Matt, I was, he's removed my advantage yeah. through quality of strike and he has a little bit more power with similar lofts. Yeah. And then the other thing as well is that there's no wind today, but we're right on the brink of not being able to reach this. And this is a, well, it's short in yardage. I would say it plays 500 to just over. Up hills and stuff. Because it's it? massively uphill. It's a good, I don't know, uphill constantly until literally this area but again you've got to get your averages to around six and just under so even if i don't get on in three i'm four with a chance of hopefully a putt for five but six is where i'm trying to get at worst the other thing as well which is really obvious when i'm hitting it this distance that bunker petrifies me trees really far back off the tee petrify me yeah so even obvious like, like i've got um, students that come and they play it like courses with lots of heather. Yeah. Like my tee shot on the first would have probably been in heather, even though it's rough here. Like you've got to be accurate, and and if that's heather, like I'm probably not getting to the green now with this club from this distance trying to break 90. Yeah. <laughs> like it makes it hard. You need to be accurate. Got to you? keep it in play. Yeah. Eight for you? Yeah. Up the left and has feathered, which is nice. Yeah. yeah, that's there. Amazing morning here this morning. Look at this. We are literally above the clouds here at Hollerton this morning. So Matt is pin eye, tricky little chip going low by the looks of it. Just running it down. 
kicked off the slope but I would say that's still close to being inside your proximity and I've hit quite a nice one. So I could see how you getting your par 5 average down to where you want definitely uh, obtainable but I can see where it's a challenge as well. Yeah. Oh, pick it up, sir. Two pars to start. That is under your averages, though. Yeah, I'm well under that. Well under. Yeah, well hold. And again, it's a good example of, I think, where people, obviously, we're still talking about the distance off the tee, but you can make it up in other places, as you've proved there, with the good old fancy, decent and chip down. and one. I mean, it's the one putt, but the chip was hit into a proximity where you had a chance of making it. Can't see you chipping it much further away than where you actually chipped it as well. Yeah. Let's talk about greens in regulation. We're not allowed to hit this green in reg, or we might sneak it in the summer because this is over 200 yards, but you might bounce it down there. Yeah. So my strategy with hitting greens in reg is you've got to be realistic. Like if I can't hit this green, I remember playing this way as a kid and I am literally now just I'm dunking it down there and I'm just so homing in on the chip and putt. Chip and putt like yeah. even off the tee, my brain's already focused to the agenda that's going to happen. Because I'm seeing this hole as like a 3.5 average anyway. It's at hard. best, yeah. I'm average. seeing it as a 4. If I can get it at 4, I'm happy. Yeah, because that's all you get your average on par 3s to 4, you're beating it. Yeah, and, but, and this one is one that I can't make can't a 3 reach. or a 2 on very easily. So yeah. I'm now... If I can get this at four, I'm then waiting for those short ones I can reach to then try and capitalise. Yeah. So I just have to donk this down. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, are we filming these shots? <laughs> yeah, good. It's just donked down there, ready for the great for chip off. Chips, yeah. So that's an interesting one. That might be a little bit of run. I'm about 60 yards out, so believe it or not, this is not a short game shot. No, pitching. This is anywhere on the green stuff. If I can get inside my proximity, I'm happy. On the green. The push, but I'll take it from that lie. Yep. Similar distance out from Matt, nice lie. I'd be imagining he's trying to home in on a closer spot than me, and he has. Good shot. Good putt. Kept it up to high. I'm really yeah. trying to keep them high, and I do like that strategy. It's happened, isn't it? I think the other thing that's interesting with this kind of setup as well is I'm loving, relishing the try to get up and down the score idea. Excitement of being a learner again. Well, hold, sir. Rolling them in. Yeah. Oh, dear. Gonna leave a lot in. That's gonna be a tricky green and reg. Good job. Straight, good strike, nicely done. So he's only able to hit a seven with the quality of his tee shot. Unfortunately, now he can't reach. So again, the reality of hitting more greens, if you get your driving strike a little bit of that, if you could push your distance on, it will bleed into the greens hit in regulation. This is not making it, relying on my short game again. Yeah, it's fine, down the left. Gonna need to pitch and putt. Just I, quickly on my shot there, like I don't know if a 90 shooter um, is even thinking about that right hand bunker. Yeah, and like, I don't know when I play with Fanu, if she was hitting her second shot in here as a break hundred shooter, I'm just saying hit it down the left, Nick. Yeah. I'm not even saying fairway rough, I'm just saying can you hit it into the space between the trees and that bunker? Yeah. Take that bunker out of play, they cost you a lot of shots as well. Well, I know. know if she gets in that bunker, she's not getting on the green. Yeah. And I know if she hits the left hand rough, she might get it on the green. And if yeah. she doesn't, she'll pitch it up by it. Yeah, I she think. If she gets it in that bunker, she's just getting the next one out, and then she's got the same as where we could have done if we'd have missed it. 
I think a lot of people are just thinking, I can't reach, I'll whack it down there. Yeah, having that strategy to know where the death is, yeah. is massive. I can't reach eight iron, I'm going to hit it hard. 200 yards. Pulled it slightly, but I've hit that as hard as I could, I reckon. I think I could hit it a little harder, but that was pretty... Just short pin eye, I reckon, yeah. but just left. Yep. So both pitching in. A little shorter, green running away. It's a tough shot to be fair. I'm a little closer. That just got a skiddy bounce, but it's done good. Yeah, not a bad shot at all. I'm just over here in the left rough, right rough as we look back, the left down the hole. Matt again inside his proximity, I would say. It's literally just a little really, I want to bump. Go low here, yeah. Because I'm on mud again, so I'm going to try my mud shot. Oh, I got it in the ear. Done well. Good shot, Very good. Nicely yeah, done. Gone mud mud <laughs> shot. Nah, maybe it's not. I can't see anything. Oh, it was that. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well right done. Right in the ear. <laughs> Oh yes, my please, game my shot. What the putting god? Break part. <laughs> Another interesting little point. You're up, you're putting uphill. I'm putting downhill, but with my chip, I'm literally just getting it inside my proximity. Yep. No part of me trying to get past or short. I just want to hit it as close as possible. Said that in the other ones, but obviously if you've not watched those ones. It just chip the ball as close as you can. Don't try and leave yourself a better side in the hole because. 18 foot proximity from 50 yards in, if you're good enough to get it within six foot every time, like which we're not, yeah. you're trying to leave it short or get it past, it's gonna make you further away. Yeah, especially the short one. The short one plus a duff is like only going short and yeah. worse, isn't it? Oh! <laughs> Needed that to work. Someone over, you're one under, you're like three ahead. <laughs> and it ain't much else apart from a little bit of proximity, but I was inside you there. I reckon we're about the same. Yeah. Um, your putting's on it. Fire. So 170 par three. Now I am trying to hit a green in reg. Absolutely. Strategies for hitting the green in reg. I'm just going to go for the fattest par. I'm going to make sure I club to a par I can miss. So the middle of this green to front is easier to hit than, say, the back. So regardless of where the pin is, mm -hmm. definitely going to work winds and sloping, which is something I do see amateurs not doing enough. Yeah, I'm literally going pin with a slight fade. If it starts slightly left, I'm not worried. Okay. And that'll finish in the big bit. Because this is a seven iron, so in effect he's now clubbing down from his tee shot. Yeah. That's a nice shot. Good shot. A little tracker. Nice shot, sir. Yes. What are you hitting? A seven as well? I've got my seven, but I don't think it, I could hit an eight there, I reckon. I'm just going to hit an easy seven. Oh, I called it a little fat. Right side. Yeah front portion in the bit that you were talking about. So we're both green and reg. Yeah, and again, like I said on the tee, understanding your fat parts of the green. Yep. Like getting it into this space is not double, but it's not far off double trying to ever get it into this space. A lot wider, and isn't I'm it? I'm just trying to get this average, anything in the threes. Yep. Like 3.8, even fours is a win. And I think getting into this spot, fours doable. If I had to keep trying, like if you, make the green this small. Yeah. So you have to hit it into this spot from that distance. Oh. Bunker. It's, it's chipping and putting now, it's not <laughs> yeah. putting. Absolutely. Tracking. Ah. Oof. You do get lasery with that putter, don't you, eh? I do, I'm gonna need to do a video on this putter or this style of putter, because I've changed everything I think about with putting over the one of the lockdowns, me and Fanula did a test. On the mallet and style. And it was so noticeable different. Yeah. You can't do the ridiculous, can you? <laughs> Go free ahead of me and break 90 hearts across the globe. Do 
thunder, bro. You're making it look so easy. In the jaws, you can have it. Well, why don't you tap in? It's metal play. I guess we should be tapping in. I think I've tapped in. I don't know, but yeah. Thank you. Very good. Uh -huh. Right, two holes left. Tricky little par four through the chute, and another par five. Yeah, it's good. Right in the middle. Obviously, I know we're using easier clubs, people who are hitting their drivers this distance and what have you, it is tougher, I get that, don't worry about that, I get that, I think it's more just a case of trying to illustrate the skills that you need to focus on, because I think one of the biggest reasons people don't break the score barriers they want to break is they get lost working on things that are maybe not relevant, shall I get the new driver? Well, if you want, it's shiny, but is that going to make you break, I mean, just imagine thinking you could break your 90 score <laughs> by just purchasing a new driver. I mean, it would be a pointless game, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I want to break 75 now. I'm, I'm, I'm going yeah. to buy a putter. Yeah. <laughs> I want to break 90. Which club does that, please, yeah. in the shop? Yeah. Um, I mean, just do you say it like that? It, hopefully it make, puts it in a bit into perspective for people. They could have it in categories, couldn't they? Break 100 clubs, break <laughs> 90 clubs, break 70 clubs, and the 70 clubs are like three times as expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but that KBS extra stiff oh, 9.5 no, I, mean, I mean there you go again if you now move it on to like changing your shaft yeah now I'm not saying custom fit won't help you I think it can help you squeeze a bit more out of your tee shots but it's one part of so many yeah and like i'd be so upset if i wasn't breaking 60 if i had a kbs shaft <laughs> honestly well, if i was tip stiff and tall this and that ah oh, 92. the upgrade price 100 percent breaking 60. yeah <laughs> are you reaching mm, i'm gonna have to hit it hard okay tee shot was a little puffy but i'm getting front edges and I'm gonna have a putt for par I feel yeah so, I mean I'm already feeling that I'm gonna get my chip proximity stuff oh, I got I pull it a bit when I go hard fine up there yeah I always aim more right when I hit it hard yeah I need to uh, get that pattern going so even though we're trying to take the distance out, this is a great example how the distance is playing in. Matt was 20 past me on the tee. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling to reach having the force, which has made me miss much bigger than I would normally miss. You're looking to make another birdie for me, huh? Yeah, I'll stop it. I've got a wedge 130. Wedge. Nice shot, a little bit out of the right. A little bit, that's like a foot. Oh no, two feet. Good shot. Not bad. Very good. So if we're talking about proximity on chip shots, it's quite interesting. Like this is a tough chip shot I've got. I'm coming down a slope, big uh, big slope on the green. Matt's putting pressure on with a great shot. Thank you. With my mindset, without stats, like this is a tough shot and I've got high expectations of it. Uh huh. If we're talking six steps in the region of proximity like when I look at this size of circle so I use the reality of what I'm trying to be yeah it almost takes a bit of pressure off absolutely I... this is where I think stats can be so useful for people if they collect them where it puts into play the reality of what you're trying to achieve and it takes away some it's always going to be lots of it there but some of the emotional out of proportion feelings that golfers feel that kind of bugger them up. Mm -hmm. Saying that, I'm probably just about to stuff this one short. <laughs> I sometimes quiz my lessons on what they their expectations are and things around this sort of area. Yeah, and it's interesting answers, isn't it? Very interesting answers, yeah. Can he get it inside his six footsteps? Six footsteps all the way around, remember, so 12 width. Now that I wouldn't class as a great shot, but it's going to be on the green, I hope. 
or just run off. For a tough shot, remember, it's an average. You've got... Quite tangled there, not a great shot, but again, for me, you've got to remember it's an average. So if that one goes outside of it, yeah, I'd rather be inside of it, but it's the reality of like, if I'd have just hit a better approach, it's landing here-ish. Yep. Like, I'd struggle not to get it inside my proximity, so knowing when you have the ones that are going to be a challenge to then knowing are the ones where you think well i can get this probably to six foot which is then way like it's going to balance this one out isn't yeah it? so it's that emotional reality it's the average word that you need to remember i think because that's the worst i can do yeah from there six paces is here yeah i'm one pace out yeah <laughs> and that was a pretty extreme, roughy lie onto a sloping green. So eye-opening. Two putts. Bogey. One putt par. Two putt bogey, walk on under your average. And then the other thing to bear in mind as well is the three putts. You need to get down to, I think it's one three putt around. If you notice, it's very different from Matt because I think he's playing very out of context. I think there's some parts of me here that are very much in context this hole being a good example noticing how many long putts i'm having yeah it's like a but then you're noticing how many tappings i'm having yeah that is relieving the stress of that one it's letting me go for my second because i've got other comfort blankets in there that are going to save me mm -hmm. if you can't if your long putting isn't good you've got to get it better it can be such a blanket to make me hit a very average tee shot pretty average approach pretty average to just worse than average chip, chip shot yeah and i've have, i've got a five on a par four which is great for my scoring average oh, it's weak again yeah again you're you're applying your gut skill set though aren't you as in every break night you shooter on this i was just loving the fact that they've had the easiest par in their life yeah. Um, your par five. Well, I think you're really demonstrating how good, if your approach play is good, that you're just smashing this. Yeah. It's and I think I'm team. evenly balancing out that if you can do a bit of putting as well as other things, you can keep it in. I mean, I'm only two over, so it's like you can see how our different skill sets are balancing out on this occasion. We're not. We're doing. I'm doing three of the four very well. Yeah. We're not getting over the 220 average. Yeah, but we're, we're short choosing, of it on purpose. We're choosing not to. But the other three, I'm well inside, which is helping me easily with my break 90. Yeah, well, you're breaking par still, so you need to calm Stop. down a fraction. Stop. Right, last hole. You're two ahead still. No, you're more than that. What am I? I'm two over. I'm one under. Was that, am I two over? I'll just think as you hit this shot, but you're definitely ahead. Par five to finish. <laughs> Get your par five average under six, peoples. Under six. Nice shot. Right up the middle. Two over has been counted. So again, this is the other funny thing, isn't it? Is that there's no way I don't think I can catch you. <laughs> yeah. Because we're not having disaster hitting at this distance. Again, for me, I don't think I'm reaching those bunkers, but if I was, I'm just seeing the bunker as the biggest no ever. Absolutely, up Loads the left. Of room up the left, even room right of the bunker. Now, here's another interesting point just to bear in mind. If I go up the right, it shortens the hole. Yep. But if I go up the right and that bunker was reachable, that's the worst play you can ever do. The other thing by going up the right is I'm now aiming into a very small part of the fairway. Mm -hmm. So if you want to increase your fairways hits, which does sometimes lead to a few more greens, not that it's the biggest stat in the world to get hung up on, in play is good, but I, I'm aiming down the middle of fairways if I want to have more chance of hitting more of the fairway. Yeah. Because I've now got left and right. 15 to 20 yards left and right of that. If I'm up the right, I've literally cancelled one side out where I'm going to be in the rough. Is that worth it for shortening it by seven yards? I would argue no, because if I go in that rough and I'm trying to hit, we think about them hitting a free word, but we're lucky we're in iron. Makes it tougher. The next one's going 40 yards if you're not careful, and then you are struggling to get your six on this hole. Good. Fairway. Uh, I went for speed, binned it and pulled it. Fairway. Seven iron. It's the seven iron, right? <laughs> I can reach the side, I think. Just so. In three, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
my 7 iron doesn't tend to go 400 yards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, out the middle, all good. Yeah, you're easily reaching in free. Yeah, I am now. I'm going to make a birdie and you'll bogey it. <laughs> Nice shot. How far is to the front? 100 to the front. 100, so... 15 middle. I reckon it's about a 110. I'm going to eagle and you're going to bogey. I've done my maths wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're holding this, are you? Yeah, I am. It's into the wind, actually, isn't it? Tiny bit, yeah. The breeze, yeah, sorry. Just go a bit. Let's go. Ah. Oh, a little short. Chipping no, proximity needed. There. Sorry? There's a good example of how to hit, but that's a missed green. Equivalent shot with a different club. In theory, hits the green, doesn't it? Absolutely. So that was a 52, and it was at my limit for 115 into whatever breeze is there. That's pretty much the exact same shot with a wedge. And there. raised my green in regulation. Just by picking the wrong or right club. Yeah, I, obviously I could execute the 52 a fraction better, but it was always at my limit. That's why I said it's into the breeze. And I know there isn't much there, but I'm instantly now thinking, oh, this is now. Now I've got to force right it. At the top end. Yeah. So I would say that's a very cheap mistake I've made there. 52 degrees, 99 yards for Matthew. In a great position to. Keep his school going. Oh, is it a little fat or not? No, I've got ball first. It's good. Just in a bit of a gully. Here yeah, too. yeah, nice shot. Ding. Greens and regular proximity. It's something you need to really think about with the courses. So if we look at this one, Matt, this is off the green, was the first one. Yep. And then I hit the wedge, which is on the green. That's the green in reg, this isn't. Yep. This one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven yards, mm -hmm. which is well inside from 115 yards where this handicap should be hitting the shot I'd get. One, two, this is seven, it's about the same, this is a, like two inches further away. Yep. So, um, obviously, if you've got drop offs on greens, we're quite flat here, this would win. Yep. You've got to really work that strategy in, isn't it? Again, it's a great example. Hit more club is, is a strategy and it, it does make sense in people's minds, but it's not always the simple as that. Out of the two putts, I want this one more. Yeah, I would as well. It's uphill. The it's flatter. Flatter. The other one is downhill after the hole. You need to be good at distance control. I think it might even be you first, but I'll go, Matt. Oh, God. So <laughs> I'll go just so you can have your glory. Yeah, thanks. Okay. I'll pace mine out and see. Yeah, you're about, I'll pace yours, thank you very much. <laughs> up the slope. Again, it's Good. long putting skill for me. I feel happy with long putting, so the different grasses here isn't worrying me. It's just a and gimme. Again, it's another tapping. Another tapping, gimme. Walk on, you've got your five, sir. Practicing those long putts more, practicing from holding within six foot more. Like, amateurs just cannot do that enough. Mm -hmm. Like, because it, it's one of those skills you can do at home as well. Yeah. You know, it's the free one you can do in the office at home, wherever. Let me just... <laughs> Literally everything six steps. <laughs> they were seven, though. So I'm closer. No, that was six, wasn't it? Was it seven, it was, was it? It seven, was yeah. It? yeah. So you are closer. I'm short okay. memory he has. Yeah. Okay. Oh, three under. Yeah, see, I was trying even to get you one more there. So breaking 90 has been done by both of us on that set of holes, but obviously with different skill sets, I get that you would be adding tops in and duffs and those kind of things, but they still apply to these stats if you're adding them in. You've got to work on taking them out. Oh, hit a putt harder than, oh, you've got to hold that. Didn't want to finish under Oh, that's lined up perfect with my triple track. <laughs> <laughs> like it was meant to be. <laughs> I'm allowed one three putt around, aren't I? Well, try to have none is good. Well done. Well played. Well under. So we're well under the distance off the tee. They're easily beating the skills, but obviously, like I say, we're not adding all the duffs and shanks and whatever in there, but they're all things that you can work on with coaches and swing ideas. But I do just think so many amateurs can lower their scores quite simply by just being a bit smarter 
and maybe applying some reality-based ideas. Reality-based, 100%. It's like more, as I'm learning throughout this process too, it's, it, it's making me open my eyes to what my proximity needs to be, how many greens I need to be hitting to shoot around par and things. So yeah. for you guys down that lens, 100% take note of all of these percentages and proximities, three putts, and try and get them better. The other thing as well, I think, which is interesting to think about, and I don't know, I've not done enough on this to know if this is true. So people ask me, what should I get better? We had a student the other day asking, you know, he's off a low handicap, should I hit it further? What should I do? It doesn't matter which one you get better. You can get all of these elements better, and that's obviously the least stressful. But some of them you can't do, you know. If you're pushing your distances to the maximum, well, here's a great example of if you then just get your approach play better and maybe your long putting better, you are allowed to win it 180 of the Mm -hmm. And if that's too big a ass, then don't do it. Like, if you take, let's take Rory, who we play with, for example. His chipping and putting have massive gains. How much we could improve his chipping with the issues and, and the things he has? Maybe it might be better for him just to hit more balls in play. Again, each player will have a specific skill set that lends them to perfect one of them more than another a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and I think that's where you got stats be... are so important because <laughs> yeah. you need to know this. Yeah, if you're absolutely. not collecting, then you're not going to know, you're guessing. Yeah, there you go. Well, you beat me there, Matt. Easy.